Radio folks, Joe Joseph here, Gwen Caldwell, John King, and uh, a couple of shout outs to uh, the Intel Hub, Alex and Shep. Uh, Fork in the chat room, good to see you, buddy. Same with Joe Cowboy. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of piranhas out there, Gwen, that, that take advantage of the fear mongering that takes place. Uh, quite often you see charities set up after major disasters like um, for example hurricane katrina there were charities set up there were uh things that were put in place to help people kind of like alternative media does they 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 help people they do the best in pursuit of 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 the truth so that people understand what's really going on but out there also were piranhas and people praying on the public and their goodwill. And it, it happens quite often today in the alternative media, doesn't it? Yes, and it does. One, well, one thing that, that interests me is some of the things that come out in alternative media that, that fleece people. And folks, you have to sharpen your discernment skills, okay? Because you have to see the truth through the muck. There's a lot of muck out there. There's muck that the the powers that be will put out to get you off the trail. And there is muck that's put out there by people who want to take advantage of you. And I, I want to point out tonight, Gwen, because it, it's got me it's got me PO'd. It's got me PO'd, something fierce. That other people are out for some sort of gain, you know? whether it be monetary or uh, to sate their ego or whatever. But I was perusing uh, this one site, uh, and uh, <laughs> I couldn't believe what I saw. Uh, and basically, it's earthquake predictions. Now, this is a, a, a relatively prominent alternative media site, I guess you could say. And uh, it was dated August 27th. Great Quake number one, Sunday, September 4th, magnitude 8.1, epicenter around Harmony, North Carolina, which happens to be very close to me. <laughs> that was yep. Sunday, September 4th. I'm still here, everybody. Uh, Monday, September 5th, magnitude 8.2, epicenter around Petersburg, West Virginia. Well, that's still kind of close to me, enough to where I'd feel it. I didn't feel it. Uh, great quake number three. Well, we didn't get Sunday and Monday, right? So let's try Tuesday, September 6th. 8.5 magnitude earthquake. Epicenter around High Knob Peak of the Virginia West Virginia State Line. Eh, nope. Okay, so three strikes and you're out, but we'll give you a fourth one. So Wednesday, Wednesday September 7th, they said magnitude 9.5. Epicenter two miles west of Catawba, Virginia. I mean, this is ridiculous crap. And meanwhile, meanwhile, prepare. We just so happen to sell food. <laughs> so buy our food. Prepare right. for these earthquakes. Boogity, 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 boogity. Yeah. I just don't, I don't understand why people give these this so much. Folks, if you want to know why the truth movement doesn't gain more traction, there's your example right there. When you put out bunk like that, what do you expect people to do? Well, you can't take it seriously, for one thing. And um, I, I don't know. It goes back to what I was saying before we went on break. You know, you have a vision. You have a goal. And every decision you make needs to move you toward that vision, that defined vision, that defined goal. And you do what you can to get yourself in that place so that whatever goes on around you is going to have as little impact as possible on you and on any recovery. You know, um, for me, I have a child. Uh, I'm a single mom. I'm self-employed. I choose to do with less simply because I'm not going to participate with a corporation. And so I had to make some changes in my life. I did that consciously. I moved into it slowly. But I'm prepared. I'm prepared for 
not being in a crisis when everyone else is in a crisis, I prepared for what the recovery might look like as best I can. And the decisions that I make, every one of them, I look at, does this move me toward where I want to be or not? And people need to start taking personal responsibility and quit letting other people, whether it's you and I or uh, John King or, uh, you know, Alex Jones or whoever it is, you know, uh, the dimwits on uh, talking heads on the lamestream media. Don't get sucked into the drama. They feed on it. It's like a feeding frenzy. That's what it looks like. That's what it feels like. It does not come from a place of love. It does not come from a place of compassion or caring. It, it, it's about selling advertising or selling food or selling you a line of crap because you're too lazy or too stupid to see beyond it or to go do your own doggone research. You know, we need to get over ourselves enough to get beyond that stuff. Damn right. Now, I know I heard the crinkle of the microphone in the background, so that must mean John's back. Oh, John? John? (laughs) I heard it briefly, Gwen, I swear. I wasn't hearing things. (laughs) You are hearing things. Oh, my goodness gracious. So, I could swear for a second that I heard him out there. Well, John, when you come back, please, come, come on and chime Joe, in. Joe, it's the uh, boogeyman uh, tapping into our a show. God, I hate when that happens. Uh, well, you know, Gwen, you, you're right. It, it's, like the, if you, it's like the Emmy Award performance. Every day it's something new. They have some sort of new drama that we have to live through and everything else. And don't get me wrong, folks. The world is screwed up. It is a soup sandwich. It truly is. But, I mean, you have to weed through the crap. And you have to see what they're doing. And I think, Gwen, that people are actually starting to understand just how screwed up it is. You know, earlier in the, in the, in the show, um, somebody put up in the chat room that, you know, one of the biggest – enemies or the greatest enemies you could face is somebody with nothing to lose and i've said for the longest time that that this country isn't there yet i mean you go to somalia or to you know some of these african countries or asian countries you'll see people with nothing to lose you'll understand what nothing to lose really is but we here in america we're not there yet and our backs well, and we wall. have the ability to not get there on a personal level. Very if true. we're willing to make those sacrifices right now and do what we need to do now so that we're prepared for that inevitability. Hey, wait a minute. Did you did you say sacrifice? Yes. Not, not profiteer? That's what I said. Yeah, it's funny. It, it's funny because I don't remember the founding fathers saying, well... <clears throat> Well, let's do this revolution thing because I see about a 10% return on investment over here over the life of the Revolutionary War. So, uh, yeah, it was a sacrifice. They sacrificed everything they had. Founding fathers like John Monroe died in debt. Thomas Jefferson died in debt. Monroe's family had to go to court to have the debt forgiven. They're like, come on, like $40,000 of of, of this money that he had spent was entertaining at the White House foreign dignitaries because the government didn't pay for that stuff. So he paid for it by himself. He died in debt. They, they lost everything they had. They were prominent people who sacrificed it all, whether it be their money, their family, their honor. It didn't matter what it was because no price was too high for freedom and for their posterity's sake. Well, and the other thing, Joe, I think we really need to watch our language and and the words that we use. We need to start calling things by their real name. Let's do it. When we come back, we're going to start calling things by their real name. I'm kind of interested what Gwen has to say about that. You're listening to Freedom Link Radio on the Orion Talk Radio Network. Don't go away. Do you hear the bell tolling, folks? Do you hear it in the background? For for whom does the bell toll? The bell's tolling because now is the time. <laughs> so it's time to stand up 
and do what you have to do to weed through all the garbage in the bunk. A sh- quick shout-out to my brother from another mother, Brad, up in Canada. Good to have you aboard. And, uh, John, it's it's good to have you back. The ghost of your microphone haunted me during the last segment, and I actually segued to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so, I did come home, and my tinfoil was all on the floor. It wasn't, it wasn't attached to my headphone. Yes, and uh, uh, so what we were talking about was the uh, the incredible earthquake posi- uh, predictions that were uh, uh, on that particular website. And I'll have the slide up, folks, so you can see uh, on the archive. I'll put it on the YouTube archive so you can see the slide because I screen captured it. Normally what happens is when you have uh, alternative sites like that that put predictions up, when they're wrong, they take them down. Whew, gone. See you, bye. But that's after they sold all the food that they had to sell uh, based on those predictions. Oh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, the Earth's coming to an end. 9.5 earthquake in Catawba, Virginia, but buy our survival food because I guarantee you, you'll make it if you buy that food. Why not John, just go on vacation? You could do that, too. Half these people are on vacation that buy, that, buy into that garbage, you know? And l- let me ask you this, folks. Let me ask you this in all honesty. So you got a comet, right? You got a comet hurtling through us, to us, and it's as big as Jupiter. And I've heard that too. What? Oh, what in the name of God? Is that, what, how, what are you going to do about it if that's the case? Wouldn't you, in turn, say, "Well, I'm going to try and make change that I can actually do something about. I'm going to do something that's within my sphere of influence." Uh, Unfortunately, it's a bit outside the scope of my sphere of influence to be able to move a comet off its trajectory, and I doubt two space shuttles going up to intercept it with nukes is going to do it either. So you can pretty much uh, write it off at that point. So knowing that, and knowing that you have no control over an event like that, why would you care? Why would you, why would you invest so much energy in caring? Exactly. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the uh, government's going corrupt. They're off the hook. And it's not just the United States government, folks. It's the world government. It's the world government. It's all the governments of the world. It's not just the United States. And, and, then, you have, and then you have governments that, not saying that Gaddafi was a freaking saint, because he certainly wasn't, but you have countries like Libya that took themselves off the world standard. They had money backed by gold. They had and no debt. And no debt. And uh, citizenry that actually liked living there. And uh, read, read Gaddafi's Green Book. You'll see what, what, it, what he thought of his, you know, what the structure of government should be and what its role was and everything else. But did, did he take all that money that he made from his oil fields and, and the rich resources of Libya? And did he put it towards... Uh, senseless wars and imperialistic takeover of the world? No, of course not. He That's invested why he, it in his people. In his people. Imagine that. Imagine that. And and because of that, the banksters were like, oh, no, 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 you don't. No, you don't, Mr. Gaddafi. Oh, heck no. So they, they, they of course, uh, invade the country, NATO, which might as well be the West, because they can't have that. So the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers go in and they clean his clock because they can't have a country that's independent and not on the debt monetary system or the fast track to slavery. And and that's what we have in Libya. And if, folks, 9-11 was just, if, if there was something that I could describe 9-11 as, it was a blatant slap in the face. That's what it was. It was, look at what we can do and get away with in broad daylight right in front of your freaking faces, and there's nothing you can do about it. And that's exactly what they did, and that's what they said to us. Well, well Joe, it goes back to, to not to, – to using the appropriate language. They are a corporation. They are a military-industrial complex. They are committing crimes against humanity, uh, and that's what we need to have to start 
using the language, calling things by their real name and understanding what that means. Because every time we don't do that, we are empowering them. Johnny Bag of Donuts, your thoughts. 